Greetings fellow Grots and Gits out there. Welcome to our second instalment of The Long War. Today we have some really exciting stuff to cover. First of all, yes, it's finally happened. We have a codex. Wah! It's happened. I'm so excited about this. We'll go through this a little bit further later on. More so just looking at how this is going to support my Orc army and some of the cool things that I've noticed. And the few disappointments that naturally come with every release. But first, we're going to go into something pretty cool. Unboxing of the Mega Track Scrapjet. By far one of the coolest models I've seen Orcs have in a long time. So we'll dive into this first off and then we'll have a look at some of those more in-depth things within our codex. All right, guys, here we go. The Mega Track Scrapjet. Let's get stuck into this bad boy. So, there he is in all his glory. So much Dakar. Looks like we've got uh, some twin big shooters, a rocket wing section, nose drill. We'll have a look at those rules a little bit later on in the Codex review, but uh, let's open this bad boy up and see what we're dealing with on the inside here. There we go. Ah, uh, nice. Looks like we've got our instructions and possibly some rules, maybe? I've known this, that with a lot of the Games Workshop stuff. Yep, here we go. Comes with the rule set inside the box as well. So that's really good for those people who, who haven't managed to actually pick up the rule book as yet. Uh, yeah, but I think you'd be mad not to have the codex at this stage. You want to get onto that as soon as you can. So what have we got here? It's movement 10 inches, weapon skill 4, ballistic skill 5, typical orc shooting, strength 6, tough to 6, 9 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 6, and a 4 plus save. Uh, I'll try and stay away from this for the moment and we'll go into that a bit further on. Let's see what we've got to deal with on our sprue. So what have we got there? Sorry guys, I'll try and get the best light as I can. We have... What looks to be our fuselage here. Wing set from, I take it these guys adapted this from a crash DACA jet of some description and used it for their purposes. Typical orcs with their little gubbins. Nose drill there, wing rockets. I've actually got some uh, ideas in, in mind for how I'm going to kit bash this already. Which you might think I'm a bit mad for kit bashing such an awesome kit but that's the beauty of Yorks. You can always go above and beyond even what they release. So what have we got there? There's a piece in mind I'm looking for, which is the firing rocket, which is, appears to be that one there. You got the smoke plume. I'm thinking of adding that to a war boss's uh, combi rocket shooter and have it like he's firing the rocket. So I'll just have to replace that one on this kit. Uh, as for the kit bash I'd like to do to this model, I'll go back to the box art. You see we've got the nose drill there and the intake. I'm thinking of putting the the grot which is getting sucked in from the shock attack gun as he's getting pulled into the little fuselage there. That'd be a, a pretty funny thing to do, like he's just starting it up and poor grot nearby is going to get sucked into it. Have a look on the back artwork as well. Yep, so we've got our twin big shooters there, our wing rockets. I believe this is some kind of a cannon. Dare say it just fires the rockets, but like I said, we'll find that out later. Back to our sprue. So much potential. I'm really digging these tracks here, guys. That's so orky, spiked. Great size for it. Fuselage itself looks fantastic. Really inspired by the Dakar jet and the Blitzer bomber, clearly. Rockets are a good size. <laughs> Our pilot actually is a pilot with his, his World War II style flying jacket. What else have we got in here that's really cool? Well, it's all cool, really, it's Orcs, come on. Yeah, it looks like a fun kit to build. Uh, I'll post some uh, up some pictures and stuff on the Instagram, which you can find at the Golden Grot on Insta if you're a follower there. Looks like he's even got a little uh, gas mask there underneath his flying cap. Yeah, I'll post some pictures up as I'm uh, building this little fella and I'll show you my uh, little variations on the kit, those few conversions that I have in mind. 
Overall, pretty basic. It's all on the single one sprue. We have our night size base, or is that a different size again? I believe that's a different size. It's not quite the night size. Still a big base, uh, which gives you some potential of what you could do on the base itself. Uh, like the idea I had with the grot getting sucked into the intake. So you'll see on the back there, it does tend to take up a bit of room. So you might have to be a bit clever with your positioning on that base, but still gives you enough to add some detail in like the skulls there, grass tufts and that sort of thing. Really looking forward to put this together and have it on the table. And here we have it, ladies and gents, the Orc Codex finally arriving for 8th edition. Much needed, as you would all know, playing an Index Army, you just don't have those tricks up your sleeve along the lines of stratagems and relics to contend with the bigger armies. Chapter Proof did give us a little bit of staying power, but nowhere near enough to stay competitive within the current meta. So let's go back and have a look at this front cover. Great artwork as usual. Got our war boss there by the looks of it with his custom shooter. I dare say he's got a claw on that side. Beautiful artwork on the inside. Crump and some towel by the looks of it. That's awesome. All right. Wow, okay, this is some great artwork within this book already. This type of stuff is the things that I always look for when I'm kit bashing my orcs. Just looking at some artwork and some designs that have been made and trying to replicate that. That would be a really great, uh, like a demon skull to try and make for a war boss, even a knob. Right. So we've got our usual contents for the breakdowns, but we're going to go straight into what I think is going to help my army. Now, I've always played my orcs as a somewhat of a horde army uh, with those elite and vehicle supports. Just trying to be an all-rounder. I didn't want to dedicate myself to having 300 plus boys on the table, which is for me, even insanity. I would go nuts and I'm just not at that level of game where I can maneuver that many units around the board and, and think quick enough about what I'll do tactically as yet. Plus, I like building and making all those cool little machines and stuff that you don't usually see on the board from a lot of Orc players. But making that current loadout of Horde with vehicle and elite support work is going to be all about getting my mindset into this book and what it can do for me. Uh, what I might do is I'll jump straight into our units that are within this codex. So bear with me. Give a flick through. I'll... Sorry, go back. War bosses. We weren't going to miss out on that one. Mega knobs, of course. Pain boys. Mechanics. Interesting, it talks about Big Macs there, but from what I've seen, the standalone Big Mac is no longer available within this codex. Looters, tank busters, trucks, battle wagons. War bikes and death copters. Mega track scrapjet. It's a bad boy we just had a look at before. Boom Daka snaz wagons, which that looks quite good as well. I can't wait to get that model with the little uh, Gretchen grot tied at the front, aka Mad Max style. We have our custom booster blasters and shock jump dragsters, which I believe are only available at the moment in the Speed Freaks box set. Knowing Games Workshop, they probably won't release those individually for quite a few months as yet. Try and boost some sales in that standalone game. Which I know is annoying, but if you're an Orc player, you might be able to purchase that with a mate and split the contents between yourselves. We have our Death Killer War Trike, which I believe is a HQ choice. Uh, and unfairly took the position of a War Boss on Bike, which is now a sole index option. Very interesting approach by Games Workshop. I can see what they're doing though. There's no actual war boss on bike model. So they've elected to make one, make some sales and go from there. We have our Rucker Truck Squig Buggy, which I think is the best looking one by far. Uh, anyone who's seen my Orc armies will know I have a pretty heavy squig theme. Even their clan name is Da Blood Squigs. We have our Flyers again, which are, I think are fantastic. And looking really good in this edition. We have mech guns, Gretchen and Run Herds, Killer Cans, Death Dreads. 
Gorknots, Morknots, Stumpers. Ah, the beloved Stumper. Went down in points, but nowhere near enough to be really competitive, I think. You're putting a lot of eggs in one basket. My experience of using it in the Index was it had staying power, drew a lot of attention, but the points you're putting into it, you're really taking away from what your army can do on the table in the way of uh, objective securing units and uh, harassing units like Storm Boys or the old buggies. Commandos, Boss Snick Rot, Flash Kits, Captain Bad Rook, Mad Doc Rot Snick, Grasgirl. I've got some great artwork there. Let's get stuck into our units. Go through our little gallery of fantastically painted miniatures, which I salivate over because I'll never be able to paint that good. Let's go. Alright. So let's have a look at our basic rules and abilities. Here we go. You can re-roll charge rolls for this unit when doing so. You can re-roll all or any of the dice. Now this one's actually a really big change from the index. When they first brought out Orcs for 8th edition, we only had the option of rolling both dice. Which was really risky for Orc players because if you had, say, a 9-inch charge and you rolled a 6 and the second dice was a 1, you'd really have to weigh up what you're going to do. You'd have to re-roll both dice, you had potential for rolling lower. And the only way around that was using ACP to re-roll that single dice which was under. So you're really removing a lot of your tools and strategies in removing CP which are really valuable in this current form of the game. It's great to see that we have the ability to choose one or both now, which is fantastic. Uh, what else have we got there? Mob rule. When using the leadership characteristic of this unit, you can either use its own leadership characteristic or you can choose the characteristic equal to either the number of models in the unit or a number of models in another friendly unit within six inches. Now, I'd have to double check that, but I don't believe it had the another friendly unit within six inches in the last version of mob rule. From memory it was just you could use the leadership of the model, total number, number of models in the unit, which in itself is really good. You, if you're rocking around a unit of 30 boys, it takes quite a while to have your leadership knocked down, so essentially you're fearless for quite a while. Uh, new one there, speed mob. So the first time the unit is set up on the battlefield, all of its models must be placed within six inches of at least one other model from the unit. From that point onwards, each model operates independently and is treated as separate until uh, unit for all rules purposes. So you can take all those nice, shiny, cool models, pop them down as a unit per se, and then they act independently, which is really cool. You could essentially have a lot more fast attack options in your army that way. Uh, daka daka daka. Each time you roll an unmodified hit roll of six for an attack with a ranged weapon made by a model in this unit, the hit roll succeeds regardless of any modifiers. In addition, immediately make an additional hit roll against the same target using the same weapon. Now, that is so much better than what it was originally. In the past, it was a one or two CP, I believe, and you needed to roll a six to get an extra shot. This time, you're always hitting on that six and it completely removes any modifiers so if you're coming up against some Aladri or Dark Elves as long as you're getting a six you're hitting those pointy little buggers and you don't have to worry about those neg threes to hit which was absolutely horrid so it looks really fantastic the way they've done that that's really helped our armies out uh, so Gaz our boy Gaz unfortunately same old model in this codex, which doesn't give me a lot of hope that they'll actually make a new Gaz model. I think they had the potential to reinvent him, a nice big model, more imposing, make him an actual Prime Orc. Had a lot of potential, but I think they really messed the, missed the mark on that one, just putting him in as is. Looks like all the work has gone into these new buggies. Uh, Warboss, as usual, big mech with shock attack gun. Now this is where I was talking before. We have our option for the big mech with shock attack gun and a big mech in mega armor. There is no standard big mech in this codex. Once again, we no longer have a, a plastic model or even a fine cast model of a big mech. So, we're 
having to go back to using some index uh, options still. So I think a lot of Orc players out there would be using the Big Mech with Custom Force Field or even Big Mech on Warbike, which is not here. Disappointing that the only way you can get it in the Codex is through the Shock Attack Gun and the Mega Armor. Bit costly points wise uh, for my liking. You want to go cheap with those index options with a custom force field to protect your guys on a bike so you can protect your war bikers and knob bikers as they push up the table from shooting. Yeah, a few little things I've left out or chose not to put in because of lack of models, which is a business standpoint. I can see why they're doing it, but as a hobby enthusiast, somewhat disappointing. Got our weird boy, Boss Nick Rot. Boss Sagrot, Death Killer War Truck. This is our new HQ choice. So instead of having a war boss on bike, we have this guy. Uh, Fuel Mixer Grot is a rule for this. Once per battle, this model advances, add six inch to the move characteristic for that movement phase instead of rolling a dice. So you're getting an auto six inch advanced movement, which is really gonna be useful. Uh, explodes on a six, as per usual, th everything with three inches suffers one mortal wound. Speed war, units within six inches of this model at the start of the charge phase can charge even if they advance this turn. Now, that's essentially the war rule for our war boss on bike. So I'll have to have a look into how much this particular model costs point wise compared to a war boss on bike and see which one will be more worthwhile in taking. This guy does have a burner. Uh, and his snare claw, a couple of boomsticks. Yeah, this one's going to have need going to have to need a bit more attention and looking into to see whether it's worth taking over an index war boss. Uh, otherwise, I do have an idea to how to make this uh, model work as a support role, as you would normally do, just getting all your guys in using the leadership benefits and moving and advancing and whatnot. Uh, I'm not too fond on the actual model of it, or model of it surprisingly. Um, I do have an idea in mind where I'm going to use a Forge World Rhinox and convert the Ogre on top to be like a war boss and give him this claw and chain and stuff to make that Feral Orc appeal. Uh, not that the model isn't great in its own way. I think it'd work better for a Pain Boy on bike or a, a Big Mech on bike, which... I think I'm, that's the way I might go. I definitely need a pain boy on bike and a big mech on bike with custom force field. And I think you know where I'm going tactic wise with that one. Just a speed freak biker army which seems to be on the cards. Always wanted to do it but never really had the chance. With this edition it looks like it can really work. Uh, boys, Gretchen, Doc pain boy, mechs, Benner boys, Knob with live banner, tank busters, knobs, all the usual suspects. Mega knobs, commandos, knobs. War bikers, custom booster blasters, the shock jump dragsters. These are our new fast attack options that you'll be seeing all over the table from now on. Now for the one that I've recently picked up today, we're good. let's go into depth in those rules. Even though know, we had a quick look at our unboxing. So it's a rocket cannon that's on that one. That's a 24 inch range assault 2d3 strength 8 neg 2 3 damage weapon. We have a twin big shooter, 36 inches, 6 shots. Uh, the wing missiles, 24 inches, assault 1, strength 8, neg 2, 3 damage, standard orc rocket. Add 1 to hit rolls, attacks made with this weapon against vehicles. Ah, so we've got a good little tank hunter unit here by the looks of it. Uh, subtract 1 from the hit rolls, attacks made by this weapon against all other targets. So you really want to be going after those priority uh, vehicles there with that one by the looks of it. Spiked Ram, each time this model finishes a charge move, select an enemy unit with one inch of it and roll on a D6 on a four plus that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. Now this rule is really going to be great for orcs. Anything that does mortal wounds is fantastic and in the index options we were really lacking in that. Now that we've got these types of things floating around we're going to be a lot more competitive against the likes of demons, such as uh, the Nurgle spam of a million and one saves that you can't get through with neg twos to hit. Where I think we're really going to got we're going to have those options there. Uh, squig buggies there. That's another one I want to look at getting. 
purely for the fact I think it suits the theme of my army. May not be competitive, but hey, I'm still a hobbyist at heart, and it will most likely only be played once until I can figure out how it's going to support my army. But it has some really good looking options there. We have a Bile Squig, which is a 36 inch range Assault 2D6 weapon. Uh, this weapon always wins on a 4+, plus unless it targets a vehicle or titanic unit, in which it causes wounds on a 6+. plus. It has its options and its abilities there. Uh, a Bitey Squig, 36 inch Assault 2, Strength 5, Neg 3, 2 damage, that's quite good. A Boom Squig, 36 inch Assault 2D3, Strength 6, Neg 1, D3 damage. Shotgun for, I believe it's the guy running shotgun, ironically. Uh, squig Launcher. Got the Bile Squig there again, the Bitey Squig there again, and the Boom Squig there again. I don't know why there's a double up for that there. They appear to be the exact same profiles. We'll have a look at that anyway, uh, a bit further down the line. Uh, riding Shotgun. When the model shoots, it can throw a grenade and shoot with its pistol in addition to any other weapons. Not bad. Uh, explodes, so on a six again, the, everything within three inches suffers D3 mortal wounds. And squig mine. Once per battle in the movement phase, this model can deploy squig mine. Uh, at any point during the model's move, place a squig mine within one inch of it and more than three inches from an enemy model. This squig mine is represented by a squig mine model but does not count as a model for any rules purposes. From the start of the next phase, the squig mine is detonated if any unit, friend or foe, move within three inches of it. Interesting. Resolve the detonation after a unit that is detonated, it has ended its move. When the squig mine is detonated, roll a d6 on a two to three, it inflicts one mortal wound, and on a four to five, it inflicts d3 mortal wounds, and on a six, it inflicts three mortal wounds. So you have to be mindful of where your models will be after you deploy one of these things. If you are running a horde, it's very easy to take up a lot of the uh, real estate on a table and, and realise that you're going to come across this. That's going to be something to think about, guys. Although, on the other hand, you could run three of these things and drop them off near some objectives and hope that the enemy goes near it and cops some wounds. Otherwise... Looks like a somewhat okay unit. I'd like to see how it does on the table a bit more than just reading its rules, but go from there. So Storm Boys, Def Copters, Met Guns. Now, the Tractor Cannon. A lot of big talk about this guy. 48 inch, heavy one, strength eight, neg two, d6. This weapon automatically hits its target. That's it, you heard it, automatically hits. Wow, what can I say about that? If the target and the enemy vehicle that can fly, roll two dice when inflicting damage. So you're potentially rolling 2d6 against an enemy flyer, or you will be inflicting 2d6 against an enemy flyer with auto hits. This is going to be a must have for every orc army. With the amount of Storm Ravens, Storm Talons, uh, I believe they're called Dark Reapers, the Eldar and Dark Eldar jets flying around. Even just one of these is going to be useful. You will always come against a flyer these days and have something to deal with it. Even against ground targets, you're getting an auto hit with D6 damage. Strength 8, Neg 2. Even against ground targets such as tanks, that's going to be really beneficial. We have... Oh, we have some different variations of the battle wagon in this one. We have the generic battle wagon, as we'd all be familiar with, with your zap gun, kill cannon, cannon, big shooters, and death roller. We then have a gun wagon, which has a rule for periscope by the looks of it. With If this model remains stationary or moves under half speed in its movement phase, it can shoot twice in the following shooting phase with its cannon, kill cannon, or zap gun. Interesting. So you've got a heavy D6 killer cannon. That strength 8 neg 2, 2 damage. Having the ability to fire that twice is going to help us out as a shooting army really well. Now, I've done some reading ahead and looked at the, the mech station. The uh, I'll go to it up the back here. 
the Mac Workshop, rather, I believe it's called now. The Mac Boy Workshop. There's an option here for more DACA. Choose one weapon that a model in the unit is equipped with, and next time any model in the unit fire that weapon, the weapon makes a maximum number of attacks. So, if you're firing that cannon twice, which is 1d6 each, you're going to get 12 shots. That makes our ballistic skill irrelevant in that, that chance. Uh, you don't have to roll for the number of shots, I, I should rather say. We still have to deal with our ballistic skill. But you're going to get a maximum of 12 shots. That's a lot more of a chance to hit with fives than it would be to roll a one on one of those D6s. So that's a really great way for Orcs to ha have a uh, firing line. Uh, let's get back to it. We have the gun wagon, a bone breaker. So this is another variation which appears... Mobile Fortress. This model ignores a penalty for moving firing heavy weapons. And Bone Breaker Ram. Add D6 to the attack's characteristics of this model in the fight phase until the end of the phase model charge moved with. So this one looks like it's going to be a assault vehicle. Loaded up with a bunch of boys, kitted out with all the weapons, moving firing without having any negatives or penalties. And just get your boys down the line, those extra attacks, extra D6 attacks for the, the ram itself. Looks like we've got a, a good delivery for knobs, boys, even mega knobs. I do believe one of these explodes on... Oh, here we go. The gun wagon explodes on a 4 plus, not a 6. Everything within 6 inches suffers D6 mortal wounds. I think that thing's going to be suicided a few times by players. Get it into those enemy lines. And take out those mortal wounds on a unit. Awesome. Death Dreads, Killer Cans, our Morkonaut and Gorkonaut, which have gone down in points. I'll have to double check what they are. Everything's become, not everything rather, our major hitters have become a few points cheaper, which I think Games Workshop realised that for what they were doing on the battlefield, they needed to be substantially cheaper for them to be more usable as a player. Uh, the Custom Mega Cannon has been renamed a Custom Mega... Oops, sorry guys, lost the camera there. Hey, small tripods, what can I do? Uh, Custom Mega Zapper, it's been renamed the Custom Mega Zapper. Same profile by the looks of it, DC Clunes, Neg 3, Strength 8. We have our Gorkonaut and Looters, Flash Gits, which the weapon has actually changed now. The SNAS gun is Heavy 3, which I think it was D3 last time. So at least you're getting maximum number of shots. That's really good for these guys. Last time I really couldn't justify using flash kits with that chance of only having one shot per guy, which I always thought was stupid for the models being kitted out with these amazing looking guns, which you could maybe only fire one shot which just really annoyed me so much. The audio truck, Daka Jet, Burner Bomber, Blitzer Bomber, Was Bomb Blaster Jet, Stomper, which not a great deal's changed there, just the points. Uh, the Mech Boy Workshop, and a Guns and Gubbins. I'm gonna go past all our weapons profiles for a moment and go to our shiny Gubbins. Uh, what have we got? We've got our stratagems. We'll go back to that in a second. I'll point out the ones I think will be relevant to my army. Shiny Gubbins. So, the Dead Shiny Shooter is an 18 inch range, Assault 12, Strength 4, Neg 1, 1 damage shooter. This is going to be really good for some stock standard war bosses, I think. Uh, the custom shooter is only 4 shots. This, you're getting 12. It looks like it'll be a really good troop killer. Neg 1 taking away. Some basic armor options for saves. Headwampus Kill Chopper, that's my go to for a lot of my war bosses. Uh, it's a strength plus two, neg two, two damage. On sixes, made for this attack, the weapon inflicts two mortal wounds. So that's our other way of getting mortal wounds through. 
Uh, super cycle work body. Each time this bearer loses a wound, roll a d6 on a 5 plus that wound is not lost. You can make a dox tool roll for this model if you do so. Hmm. Right. So essentially it looks like that's just a, a feel no pain, a 5 plus instead of a 6 plus. Now, I've always thought that they should go back to what it was in 5th edition with Cyborg Body being an invulnerable save. Makes more sense, but this is what we get, I suppose. The Killer Claw. Now, this is just a souped up Power Claw by the looks of it. It's a Strength 2, Neg 3, 3 damage, pretty stock standard, uh, but allows you to re-roll attacks made with this weapon. That's going to be really juicy. Warboss is hitting on 2+, plus. the Claw makes him neg one, so you're hitting on threes. So you're getting rerolls there, but if you have a knob banner nearby, you're hitting on twos again with rerolls of ones. That's insane. You are pretty much guaranteed you're always going to hit unless you fail that second roll. Essentially, you're going to clean house with this one. I don't mind that at all. The next lot of shiny gubbins appear to be faction specific, except for this Scorched Git Bones. Psyker only. Okay, so this is for our weird boys. You can add one to the psychic test taken by this bearer, manifesting psychic power from the WA discipline. So, we know we're getting plus one for every ten boys within range, which I believe is six inches, to a max of three. So if you've got a 30-man unit, you're getting your plus three, this would give you a plus one. Really good thing to make sure you're getting the jump off, uh, some of other other very psychic powers. Dangerous at the same time. I know as a player, I have used nearby units of boys to get the plus three, and I have perils nearly every single time. This plus one is going to make that likelihood even more possible. So, just something to be mind of. Keep care, be careful about how you're using it. I suppose. Uh, keep. A lot of boys away if you're worried about dropping out. Now we have our Git Shopper Shells. Sorry, this is another generic one that we can take. Model with custom shooter combi weapon with Scorch or combi weapon with rocket launcher only. Add one to the strength of the damage characteristic of that weapon shooter custom shooter profile. In addition, improve the AP of the weapon shooter or custom shooter profile by one. So that's going to be really good with the combi Scorcher. You could have an extra damage, extra strength, extra AP. So it'd be a 2 AP Scorcher, strength 6. That's going to be really good. You would not want to charge that guy. Uh, the Lucky Stick, which is a goth item only. So you have to be really careful about what uh, cultures and clans you use for this. So that's add one to hit rolls made made sorry, add one to hit rolls for attacks made by friendly goth character made models while they are within six inches of the bearer in the fight phase. In addition, you can re-roll hit and wound rolls for attacks made by the bearer in this fight phase. So re-rolls for days by the looks of it on that one. Uh, the thinking cap, which is a blood axe one only. There's the Res Mecha's Red Armor, which is Evil Suns. The Gobshot Thunderbus, which is Bad Moons. Lots of Daka there by the looks of it. To Fix the Uppers, which is Death Skulls. Uh, Bro Brog's Buzz Bomb. Grenade 3d6, Strength 5, Neg 1, 1 damage. Not too bad. Uh, the Bad Skull Banner, which is for Freebooters. Now, this takes me to what clan I'm going to run the majority of my army as. For the purposes of this edition, and how the orcs are performing so far, the way to run my army is going to be Evil Sons. So, I'll go over this item, and then I'll give you a bit of a breakdown of how I'm thinking my army is going to work. So, Evil Sons model only. Add one to the move characteristic of the transport. While the bearer is embarked within it, in addition to the bearer is embarked, then at the start of your movement phase, roll a d6 for each enemy unit within one inch of the transport. The bearer is embarked within on a four plus the unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. So you're adding plus one movement to whatever transport you're in. 
that's going to be massive, especially if it's already a Evil Suns transport. So it's going to have that plus one to movement, plus one to advance, plus one to charge. So you're getting plus two with this item. You'll be moving all over the table with that one. And again, anything that's going to inflict D3 mortal wounds is fantastic. Let us have a look at our clan rules. I'll go back to the start bit. I'll just try and find that. I only had some elevator music going on right now. I'll stop because I'm even annoying myself with that. What gods, clans. Where, oh, where are they? The joy of looking at a codex on camera without familiarizing yourself with it as yet. But that's what this is all about. Fluff. I don't want the fluff. It's got to be here somewhere. Murphy's Laurel is just on it, and I'll have to go all the way back. Here we go. Clan cultures. Let's go down to our evil sons. Add one to the move characteristic of models with this culture. Adding two instead if that model is a speed freak. Awesome. So our new buggies will have plus two. And add one to the advance and charge rolls. So you're always getting that plus one for your movements, assaults and advances with the evil sons, which I think is fantastic because we've got army-wide effects of Daka Daka, which improves our shooting considerably. Uh, we have some strategies in here, this book, which will help us out as well. But I think it's definitely the movements and getting into combat as fast as we can, which will be more beneficial than having extra shots or extra attacks. The number of attacks we have as an army baseline, stupendous. A boy, three base attacks with his chopper and slugger, Plus one attack for being over 20 models. So that's Green Tide rule, I believe. So that's four attacks. You cast Ed Banger on that unit for a plus one attack. Five attacks. Now, as long as you get into combat with that, I don't think there's a lot that's going to be able to deal with it. Three attacks base is going to be hectic. Uh, in addition, models with this culture do not suffer penalty to their hit rolls for advancing, firing, assault weapons. Do not suffer penalty to their hit rolls for advancing and firing assault weapons. Now, I wonder if they were supposed to have meant heavy weapons. Interesting. I'll have to double check this and have a look and see what uh, everyone else is talking about. Hmm. But anyway, yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking about for my army. Just get in there nice and quick. We've got the base mechanics for the army to do a lot of damage anyway. Uh, it's all going to be about movement for me, I think. Getting in there nice and quickly and smashing your enemies close up. One of my tricks I'm thinking of at the moment is running a Gargantuan Squigoth. Now, those of you familiar with the rules for that bear boy, when you finish within one inch of an enemy after a charge or a movement, it's a stampede rule, so you're inflicting mortal wounds with that. Combine that with our... Relic, our shiny gubbin of... The red armor uh, transport bearer than bark upon. So on a four plus that unit was suffers D three mortal wounds. So you're going to be doing D three plus. I think it's another three mortal wounds. Either way, we're going to be dishing out mortal wounds left, right, and center. Plus the plus one to movement, which is the big letdown for the Squigoth. It's not as fast as it really can be, or should be, in my opinion. It's slower than a stomper. I tend to think that a big lizard creature with four legs would be running a bit faster, but hey, that's just me. Here we go. That's where it's going to be at. 
think you might have to kit bash a, a war boss with this exact armor. Pop him in a gargantuan squigoth and see what damage I can do on the table. Really looking forward to that. Let's have a look at our stratagems. Now, the stratagems I've been looking at that are going to help my army out, clearly mob up. Everyone's been doing that since we had our release through chapter approved, where you can mob up a unit of 10 plus to a unit of 10. So essentially you can have a full unit of 30, mob them up to another unit of 10, have a unit of 40 boys. For one CP, that's just a go-to. Everyone has to use that if you're running Horde. We have Warped. This one's going to be invaluable. One CP. Use a strategy before the battle begins. Select a weird boy. And this model can knows one additional psychic power from the power of the war. This will be really, really useful. Not only will you be able to jump your boys, you'll be able to get Warpath on them. Uh, which gives them that plus one attack. Sorry, I believe I've referred to it as Ed Banger before. Uh, it's Warpath. So it gives them an extra attack. So 40 boys with an extra attack. Being jumped across the table, that's what you need it for. Extra Govins. Seems a bit expensive, but it can be useful after we just had a look at those great uh, shiny Govins there. So, use this stratagem before the battle. Your army can have one extra shiny Govins for one CP. So you could have Ed Wampus Kill Chopper on one HQ and the Red Armor on another one. Or you can use two extra shiny governs for three CP. So you get your base shiny govern for a warlord. Then you can add in two extra items for other HQs. That's going to be really, really useful. If you've got some kitted out war bosses, some big mechs, pain boys getting around, that's where it's going to be really good. Uh, get stuck in. This is another great one. Three CP. Seems a bit costly to me, but could be really beneficial if you need to wipe out an elite or tough unit you just can't chip away with on the boys. Gives you an extra fighting phase, essentially. Uh, end of the fight phase, select an orc infantry unit from that army that has already fought once, and you can fight a second time. So if you haven't quite cleared a unit out that you really need to destroy in that round, that's the one to go for there. Force field projector's not bad. 3 CP seems a bit much. I'd be more inclined to bubble wrap around a big mech on war bike or big mech and move those along. Uh, Ard boys, got shields, loot it. Extra stick bombs, teleporter. Teleporter's a really good one, for, I believe. Uh, this strategy, during deployment, you can set up an orc unit from the army with a power rating of 20 or less. That gives us the ability to teleport Gorknauts and Morknauts across the table. That is massive, guys. We can put one of our best combat mechs within enemy lines and get a charge off very convincingly. Especially if it's a Evil Sun with the plus one movement and charge and advance. By the looks of it, it's going to be a deep strike. Uh, so you're setting up anywhere in the battlefield that is more than nine inches from an enemy model. Uh, if you use this stratagem on a transport, all units embarked inside it remain so it is set up on a teleporter. So, my idea is you load up a either five or six, meg, six, six knobs in that with claws or big choppers. Or even pop a war boss in there with five knobs. So not only do they have to deal with the Gorkonaut or Morkonaut in their lines causing all kind of havoc with shooting in combat. You've got a, a decent little combat squad inside to come out and churn up some guys later on. Or it explodes, does some damage to nearby enemies and you manage to save most of you guys in there not rolling once. Again with the tripod, my god, sorry guys. Yeah, that's where it's gonna be at. Warpath, that's one for the extra attack. To jump, as per usual. I'll have a look through this in more detail, guys, and get back to you as to what I think is going to work more. But those are my general ideas for now. Apologies again about the tripod. Um, next step will be investing in some better recording equipment for these videos. I don't want to have to be dropping the camera 
every two seconds. That must have been really frustrating for you, but this is a start, and I'll catch you next month with the next installment of The Long War. Catch you guys.